and throw in what my mum always says. Count to 10 before you answer. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Breathing while you do it. Take your time. And you quickly find out, mm, okay, let me manage the emotion in the moment and bring that emotion into rain. Let me hold it back and just think, pause before something comes out of my tongue, this little whip, this little... Anyway, I throw a whole bunch of things in there as we kick off this, this Tuesday podcast. Well, a big, big God bless you from me, Rory Alec. Lovely to be with you on this Tuesday Spirit Soul Body Podcast morning noon or night lovely to be with you guys uh, i start the record on this program on this podcast i haven't got a clue what we're going to talk about today <laughs> i'm scratching my brains um started off this morning with a wonderful conversation difficult conversation with my beloved wife and um there's a german word called tachelis which means you're you're talking turkey only Tachlis is a lot more attractive than talking turkey. You know, when you say, and you guys in America will understand this, it's like, we talked turkey. I mean, we were talking, we were getting down to, to the bone. We're getting down to the, as a husband, I did something a little insensitive yesterday. And today was the, ah, the religious folks would say it was a come to Jesus conversation. <laughs> it was like, and I said, babe, is this something we should do now? Because I'm about to go and record a podcast. So, um, very good conversation. It was important for her and I to have this conversation. Guys, girls, make sure you talk together and never let the sun set on your anger. What a wonderful piece of wisdom. Not that Carol and I were angry yesterday in any way, actually. It was, to some degree, something that brought about some hurt for her and it was something that I did that was dis dismissive to some degree but not something I really thought about. As we all learn very quickly that many times things that cause us to be hurt actually are just the catalyst or the tip of the iceberg as to what's really bubbling on underneath and I encourage you and I that if somebody irritates you or you get hurt by somebody, before you even start to think about what they are doing, what they've done, and why you're so miserable toward them, just pause and start to look inward and say, uh, did I do something wrong? Is there something that I caused this person to be dismissive or to bring this hurt upon me? And in there, somewhere along the lines, and throw in what my mum always says, count to 10 before you answer. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Breathing while you do it. Take your time. And you quickly find out, mm, okay, let me manage the emotion in the moment and bring that emotion into rain. Let me hold it back and just think, pause before something comes out of my tongue, this little whip, this little... <laughs> anyway, I throw a whole bunch of things in there as we kick off this this Tuesday podcast here that just before I hit the record button kind of thing, there was this hour-long conversation downstairs at the fireplace. By the way, Carola sends lots of love. She's doing so well. And of course, I repented in the sense of, please forgive me for being dismissive. I definitely did not reject what you were saying or thinking or feeling. Or, And of course, she's wonderful. Uh, that's not what I want to talk about today. I want to find out how are you doing? Are you well? This is my podcast, Spirit Soul Body. I hang out with you guys when you invite me in. Thank you for that invitation. Uh, thank you for choosing to click the link and say, okay, what's he up to today? What's he going to talk about? Um, today I have no guest. I, I am just too busy. And you say, okay, Rory, talk to me. Tell me about this. You keep saying you're going to have guests. You've had some great guests from all interesting parts of the world. Yes, I have had some great guests. I have some amazing people that I want to talk to that are already trying to coordinate their schedules to hang out with you and I and for us to have a great conversation. And um, yeah, do you like my glasses, by the way? Not bad. They almost go with the, the whole spirit, soul, body color. It wasn't designed that way. Um, I just didn't have a pair of glasses up here that I 
could grab. So I grabbed some that are in my <laughs> shelf over there and put the, put them on. But uh, anyway, so yeah, I know yellow glasses. Tell me if you think they look pretty cool. I know some of you will love them. Others will go, is he nuts? Some of you will like have this little critical thought inside, perhaps like, ah, oh, he's trying to be too cool for himself, you know. And maybe it's a bit of all of that stuff. <laughs> anyway, they were functional. They work. Um, I can see you clearly wherever you're sitting now watching, whether you're lying in bed, you're in the car, whatever you're doing at the moment. Thanks for hanging out with me. My week is so busy that I have not really been able to get my coordination and production for Spirit Soul Body. And I'm just being vulnerable with you here. I'm just telling you as it is. Um, I look forward to having guests. I love to have guests and chat about. And I will. We will have guests that talk about with knowledge, with expertise on Spirit Soul Body. Or at least I have some friends who hang out with you and I and we just talk turkey yeah we we talk about i was going through the actually i will tell you what i've been getting up to this week i will just um i was going through all of the headlines and from time to time i kind of watch the news i find the news quite depressing um i also find the news presenters not the people who present the news but the news um channels I, I find they, they are very narrative-led, and I often wonder, excuse me while I bump my microphone here, I find them very narrative-led, and sometimes I wonder if they actually are unbiased, whether they really are reporting news with a balanced factual. Of course they're not. We know this now. Uh, in fact, in 2023, I think most people on planet Earth will tell you that their news service is biased. And frankly, they watch it because whether the news service is more to the left or to the right or somewhere there, they tell us what we feel we want to hear and we like to listen to that particular news network because it fits in with my my worldview and my ideology and my whatever. There, there's dynamics going on all fronts where I feel the news can be manipulative. So, uh, But as I look through the news here and I just look at the headlines and this is something that I, I use. It's an app, very interesting one. It's called um, Ground News. So it literally goes as far as to tell you, okay, this is red or blue in terms of following the American dynamic, but it's pretty much for many uh, democratic type structures. You've got those who are on the conservative side and those who are on more the progressive liberal side. And this Ground News app that I have basically gives you a rating. It says, okay, 48% or more towards the left and 48% or more towards the right, for example. So I just quickly scroll through my, my news service because I, I, I really have an understanding, okay, I'm going to, the news media tries to indoctrinate us in so many ways. For example, the whole Ukrainian-Russia dynamic, and I know it's a hot potato, and then followed very quickly the whole China-Taiwan dynamic, which is another hot potato. Uh, then, of course, you've got America, which is just in its own internal meltdown, however you look at it. Uh, just gone weird and nuts in many respects. My opinion, of course. Not in every respect, but in many respects, okay? And um, so I, I always get this feeling I'm being manipulated as a viewer of the news. And here in Austria, the news is more balanced. It's more conservative and more subtle. Uh, when I say conservative, it's not so upfront in its, here's my, uh, biased, unbiased, but very biased perspective. Um, but they are subtle and they are leaning towards or away from cult family units and more of a conservative feel. And I, for sure, I'm more conservative. Having said that, I surprise many conservatives because I, I can firmly plunk my my leg into a into a camp with the left on certain things. You know, sometimes my daughter says, "Well, Dad, you're quite a socialist," and I go. No, I'm also quite a capitalist. And no, I'm not totally a capitalist and I'm not totally socialist. I, there are things that you can find good in every single area. I think what I am firmly 100% is I'm someone in love with him. I'm in relationship with God Almighty and I find my knowledge and understanding of him through scripture. And no, I didn't say through a denomination or a local church or a none of that. 
I find it through the Word of God as I read it. And in some ways, some may say I'm rebellious, but I read it very much independently of someone else's interpretation. Don't get me wrong. There are men and women out there who bring great insight into Scripture and into how I absorb the Word. But the final say inside of me is always a still small voice. So if I'm making sense on this Tuesday, just say amen, brother, even if you believe or don't believe. Just By the way, let me know where you're watching from as well. It's lovely to be with you. I actually have a text number here you can connect with me on. You can text me. This is a WhatsApp number. Don't call it because I don't answer it. But text me if you've got any ideas for the show. And for those of you who've sent some great ideas, thank you very much. We're working on them. I say we. I am working on them. That's why there's no, no guests today. I haven't had a minute to actually prepare that. But I think you got that already. And you can also email me here at raz at roryalecmedia.com. So some of you have already emailed me. Thank you very much for your ideas. And thank you for saying hi. I appreciate it very much. And by the way, if you say, Rory, you moved the, the text thing off too quickly and just rewind. You're, on, you, you can, you're in complete control of what, how you're watching me. I'm completely at your beck and you can hit pause and I stop talking. You know what I mean? That was a strange face. I know. I got it. So yeah, I'm all over the place today, but enjoying it very much. And I want to talk to you about this book because my goodness me. This book stepped into my world two weeks ago. Uh, and I didn't know about this guy. He's an Austrian guy, lives in Brazil, Reinhard Hitler. And um, maybe you know all about him, but I had never heard of him before. And this book has stepped into my world, The Heart, 21 Days to Transform Your Life. We're going to talk about this in a moment. Coming to the headlines. So I'm looking at ground news here and I see, okay, Tokyo company aims to be the first business to put lander on the moon. Okay, good for you, business. Um, doesn't sit with me. I'm interested in the moon. Don't get me wrong. I was watching SpaceX last week launch this massive rocket, which has got two parts to it. And the, the biggest, heaviest object ever to leave or try to leave the atmosphere. They got a I think I got up like two kilometers up or something. No, much more than that, actually, Rory. But anyway, they were reaching a high speed of around 2,000. And then you saw of the, these 32 engines on this this massive um, SpaceX rocket, you saw this rocket do this thing and then blow up. Spectacular. And I know we've all been waiting. We all. I've been waiting. And many, many others have been waiting for this amazing uh, SpaceX endeavor i'm interested i'm I, I don't agree that we should all fly to mars but i'm interested in adventure i'm interested in exploration i'm always interested in the moon and we're trying to get an arrange we'll see if we can get one of the astronauts on the moon one of one of you who watch spirit soul body podcast dear katie you know who i'm talking about um has suggested that we might be able to get one of the astronauts in fact the only human who spent the longest time on the surface of the moon. And I know there's some out there who go, well, yeah, did we ever really get to the moon? <laughs> I know there's all of these interesting thought processes that we can ponder on and that we find on the internet through YouTube and other interesting places. So yeah, uh, Tokyo Company aims to be the first business to put a lander on the moon. Good for you. Go for it, guys. Israel marks 75th anniversary amid doubt and division. And I go, okay, where does that come? Oh, that comes from Reuters. Now, Reuters, why, why, why would there be doubt and division? And they'll have a very good reason. And some of it will be a truth dynamic that's mixed in with the narrative. And not everything Reuters brings is negative. That's not what I'm saying. Or incorrect or is a biased na narrative. Israel, for me personally, is a miracle. It is a nation that got born again. It came out of nothing in a day. Now, after much agony, much sacrifice, and who knows what went on behind the scenes. But it is completely in 1948 fulfilled biblical prophecy and what God said through the prophets, which 100 years ago, 200 years ago, seemed impossible. And yet today we have Israel celebrating its 75th anniversary. Go figure. And a language that wasn't spoken by the masses for over 2,000 years is now Hebrew resurrected also amazingly out of the dust. And the nation of Israel continues to flourish. I mean, not only flourish. 
I think if I have my facts correct, the most Nobel Prize winners have come out of this little nation, Israel. The most advanced computer technology, the most advanced agricultural technology, and many other technologies come out of this amazing little nation called Israel. It is a miracle and literally today is flowing with milk and honey. No, not literally milk and honey, but it is a land flowing with produce. It is being regreened. Millions of trees have been planted. And by the way, let me just throw this in as I'm going through the, the kind of headlines here with you guys and girls. Check out Mike Bickle. Mike Bickle and a lot of the prayer network leaders are coming together from the 7th of May through the 28th of May, Pentecost Day, and they're declaring a 21-day fast. So for those of you who believe in the Lord, in God, and you have a heart for Israel or there's something there, or even if you don't have a revelation or a heart from a biblical perspective of Israel, my encouragement to you is check out Mike Bickle and this whole Isaiah 62 prayer and fasting, 21 days of prayer and fasting, and they're believing God to raise up, according to Isaiah 62, watchmen who will pray from your nation, from wherever you are, will be praying for Jerusalem as a place and the people of Israel. And of course, here Reuters was commenting on Israel Mark's 75th anniversary of it, doubt and division. And that brings in all of the, the humanity challenges that there are, there's no doubt about it. And Israel is not perfect and is not right. And I talk about the Palestinians, they in turn are also not perfect and not right. And in the midst of all of that, of course, many families are being hurt in many different ways. But nothing is ever as you think it might be. There's always three sides to a story. Um, then we move on to another headline. New research suggests, talk about going from the sublime to the ridiculous, that French fries may be linked to depression. <laughs> I could comment on that, actually. Check out the omega-6s that come through the oils that French fries are fried in. And not only the fact that they're fried in, uh, these omega-6 rich oils, but the fact is that they've so many French fries are fried in the same oil for how long? Now, I'm sure if you work for McDonald's, you probably say, hey, Rory, we change the oil every other day, every other hour. <laughs> every time we cook a batch of French fries, we change the oil and bring in new oil. I know that for sure is not the case. It would be uh, cost prohibitive. You wouldn't have a business, right? Anyway, if you do work for McDonald's, let me know. I'd love to know. Uh, how often you change the oil for your French fries. Moving on here with ground news, they say China breaks silence over status of stationary Martian rover. Okay, love Mars, love the idea, and interested in the fact that there's a stationary rover on Mars? Yes, but my life's too busy and we haven't got enough time on this podcast to talk about that. And does it really change the way my world's impacted? Maybe not. Guatemala president pledges strong support for the Republic of Taiwan. Okay, okay, Guatemala, why do you feel the need to do that? There'll be a very good reason, no doubt. This is coming from Reuters again. And again, I want to pause here for a minute. I'm seeing, for example, I heard this yesterday on, on my news feeds on YouTube, how the industrial complex producing weapons and all of this sort of thing, there are 21 of these key people representing these companies traveling uh, to Taiwan to go and see how they can support Taiwan. Well, I mean, why? Well, of course, because just two weeks ago, China was doing its military exercises in the ocean around the island of Taiwan. Okay. And then you see how, for example, there are developing nations, we call them, developing as in Western nations and developing nations. And, for example, congratulations, India. You've just become the largest country in the world with the most people. You've surpassed China as of last week. So the, the world is buzzing. I mean, it's happening on all fronts, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And um, so when I see what's going on with Taiwan and I go inside of myself, and you may ask, Rory, what are you thinking? <laughs> Glad you asked. I'm going to tell you. I do think we're heading to a third world war. And I say that with a pragmatic mindset, not really focusing on the devastation, the pain, the destruction, and the death that it will bring to potentially millions. 
I do it from a pragmatic perspective because I, I'm, I, I have a biblical worldview. I'm looking at the book of Revelations, and not only that, but I'm looking also at the Old Testament prophets. This is very important to me. And so I'm lining up what I see circumstantially, and I only see as much as everybody sees in part. I don't have it all together. I'm just giving you my opinion of where things are at. My prayer is, Lord, please let there be no third world war. But as I study scripture, I know a third world war is coming. When it comes, I don't know. And what the final outcome is, I don't know. And I see that even as I've been reading a few headlines on this podcast, um, and there are many, many more. I mean, I can keep scrolling through, and I don't want to bore you guys on this. We can move on. Um, yeah stuff that's important locally and then stuff that's not so important. And then, of course, I still see here in the UK, again, UK's Rishi Sunuk, uh, Sunak uh, wants EU deal on passport checks to ease delays. So, of course, the whole Brexit thing that happened a few years ago, well, it's, my goodness me, the years are moving on quickly. Uh, the UK is reestablishing itself outside of the EU. and That's a whole different conversation. UK warns China secrecy over military expansion risks tragic miscalculation. Now, what could that all be about? I bet you that business and money at the end of the day is, is really, the love of money is the root of all evil. Taiwan activists formally arrested for suspected secession in China. It's like, make up your mind. Whether you live in Taiwan and you've got to decide whether you're for, for, for Taiwan or for China, this is an interesting dynamic there. And again, I'm just looking at the headlines. I haven't read the articles. I just put that disclaimer out there. One always needs to do your own research. But I see how you and I, even as I sit here in Austria and you sit in your home or in your office or wherever you're watching right now, we are being uh, moved by our emotions to pick a side, to pick a side. And in a sense, I don't want a third world war. I don't want Russia to be attacking and killing people in the, United, in, in the Ukraine. Um, and it's never as simple as we're led to believe in a very short three, four, five, ten minute. Okay, fine. Some news networks will do specials on an issue or a subject matter or on nations fighting each other. But we can never get the full picture. And there's always three sides to the argument, more like 30,000 sides to an argument. But God knows best. And so I find myself, and I want to finish all of my, all these different topics that I'm opening up. I find myself coming to the place where I say, Rory, focus on your creator, the one who created the universe, the one who created every individual and every uh, every situation that, let me rephrase that, not every situation we find ourselves in, but he's created everything we are living in on this earth, the, um, the world that we inhabit and the people that are around us, he has created in a way. Now, Humanity is corrupted by sin. I firmly believe this, and the Bible teaches this very clearly. And we all have a heart dynamic, which brings me to this book, The Heart. 21 Days to Transform Your Life, Reinhard Hertler. Um, boy, am I going to do something with this if I can. The first thing that I'm doing is, is that I'm reading this book. It is not a long book. It is not difficult to absorb. <laughs> it's at all. And... I could almost, without an exaggeration, say every single page that I read, I see scriptures that he references, that Reinhardt references here, about the heart and how the heart works. I can say, honestly, I've read them all. I mean, I've read the Bible through multiple times. And so there wasn't one that jumped to surprise. But the revelation that he brings, almost on every page, I've had an aha moment it's like aha oh aha so i know in my future on this very podcast spirit soul body i'm inviting reinhard hertler to be on and i already have it in my heart in my spirit a desire to do a 21 day marathon spirit soul body every single day and all we do in those 21 days and and this will be my invitation to you is when we do this, and I think maybe in a year's time, um, we will tackle a chapter a day. We'll add a fast uh, to it where we where we just push down the old flesh and we really 
ask the Lord to transform our heart. Now, whether you believe in God or not, I think if you read this book, you would get it. You'd go, oh my goodness me, I get that. And he's just talking about how our hearts are really the key to the brain, the brain's interpretation, whether in a positive or a negative light, and how that then moves into the body in terms of literally impacting every single cell. And he brings everything back to heart, heart motivations, uh, the condition of the heart. And I don't know about you, but have you ever met people that in their belief system, in their brains, uh, the way their emotions work, the way their free will works, the way they intellectualize, and not intellectualize, it's not, the way they use intellect to process is so 100% with what they believe in their heart that you, when you talk to them, you just get this feeling that this person is is connected. Whether they whether they believe in God or not, I've I've met many people who don't believe in God, but between their heads and their hearts, they're just in agreement. They're in alignment. I keep bumping my mic today. I don't know why I'm doing that today. Move it out the way here. They're in alignment, and when you're in alignment, there is a peace dynamic. And that doesn't mean to say your eternity is secure. And that doesn't mean to say you're forgiven of your sin. That's a different conversation. But the way that he talks about the function of the heart, well, I, I'm already showing this, but I have never met this man. I didn't know about him until I got this book from my stepson two days, uh, two weeks ago. And and I'm already wax, lyring, wax lyricling this to my beloved Corolla. I'm saying, baby, this book... I know this book for me is a divine appointment. So that's as much as I'm going to say on this podcast. I know I'm going to do something with this book with me. I can't speak for you. I can't speak for my wife. I can't speak for my kids. I can't speak for anybody else. But for me, I'm I'm soaking up this book. I'm bringing it together with scripture. And in my my life, the last 25 years as a leader in ministry, that's really impacted millions across the world in terms of my my Christian television uh, focus or task that I had for the last 25 years of my life. I have come across so many questions, not only in my own personal walk with him, but in others that this, this whole adjusting my understanding about the position of the heart, when you get this, it answers so many different things that I've myself wrestled with and when people have said to me Rory as a reverend what did you say about this what do you say about this what do you say about this as someone who's a uh, has an apostolic media gifting on your life what do you say about this what do you say about this what do you say about this and some things of course I have an answer for and it's all based from scripture but in other things I know for me this is my next big focus, understanding the role, the role of my heart, this inner thought process. And by the way, did you know that the heart has 40,000 neurons? These are the same type cell structures that your brain has. In fact, your heart doesn't need your brain to function. It thinks in its own right, but it thinks emotionally. It doesn't think intellectually as the brain does. And actually, it's the heart that gives the brain instruction. Man. Anyway, <laughs> it's coming up to the half hour on this podcast. I know I've just been enjoying you, um, and hopefully you've been enjoying some of the thoughts that I have here. Coming back to World War III, just pray about it. Prepare yourself and your family. Make sure you have what you need. And by the way, last week, I just want to throw this in as well, just to add more thoughts to the thought process we had one of the largest storms. In fact, over the weekend into yesterday, we're still feeling the effects of a solar storm that really has started multiple electrical fires around the world. Now, we don't get it on our mainstream media because they're not focused on that narrative. They're still trying to tell us that human beings are warming the planet, and this is not the case. Is the planet warming? Yes. But in other parts of the planet, it's cooling. So climate change is happening, and where you get my line in the sand is, hey, human beings, stop polluting our oceans with plastics. Stop putting harmful chemicals into our rivers. Stop polluting. Stop destroying the environment. Uh, stop cutting down the rainforest. I'm there 100%. And by the way, it's the 
poorest soil fertility on the planet. Just do your research. The rainforest is a miracle because of everything that happens above this very thin soil layer in the rainforest. Did you know that? I didn't know that until I did my research. It is really what grows there, and it's the way that the vegetation falls from this the dense vegetation actually nourishes this top layer of, of soil, keeps the whole thing going. But And even I'm doing a bad job of explaining it to you on this podcast this Tuesday. But um, the rainforest has some of the poorest soil fertility on the planet. Now, of course, you go to the Sahara Desert, you're going to struggle there. But it what the tragic thing is, is that this massive oxygen, this massive lung on planet Earth, this wonderful greenery that is that is by the way benefiting from 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 a richer co2 environment please we we're basically we're starving our plants and our trees and everything that's green it needs more co2 not less what it doesn't need is it doesn't need all the other chemicals and the other pollutants that also come from fossil fuels so see life is never straightforward it's not just black and white so we we have politicians trying to tax us and and hold us down and control us and who knows what's behind them because they just want to get voted back in. I generalize, not every politician is like this, but many are, most are, and I wouldn't want their job. Well, wow, it's difficult. It's a tough one. And by the way, is there value for the political structure and the, the regulating dynamic? And yes, there is to some degree. Does it have to be that big? No, it shouldn't be. Too big is too dangerous. I'm touching on many different subjects here. Finishing on the rainforest, do your own research. Leave that lung to provide this planet with wonderful oxygen. Farmers are stripping down this, and thank goodness governments are starting to slow that process down because there are people who are called activists going, don't do this. Now, some of them are for the right reasons or partially the right reasons, and others are finding a place where they can vent their frustrations in their own lives and they become activists and make other people's lives miserable. Like just a few weeks ago, we had a massive traffic jam. I was trying to take my darling girl to work and it, it, the whole city here where we live in Austria was just clogged up. Seven o'clock in the morning, freezing cold February, March thereabouts. We found out afterwards what had happened was five well-meaning, well-thinking or hey, I just want to be recognized in life or I'm frustrated with my life and I just want to do something that disrupts disrupts everybody else and makes their day miserable, glued themselves to one of the main roads in our city here because they'd seen it on the news and they thought, well, this is a great plan. And the whole city shut down for literally two hours. Now you could say, well, good, that'll get their message across. Well, yeah. But I don't think that that's the best way to get a message across because of the conversations that happened around the dinner table. And you might say, well, well, good. You had conversations around the dinner table because of that message. Yes. But I also got the feeling of that their cause was not appreciated by anyone around the dinner table because it was really disruptive. And you might say, well, good, because that's the whole purpose of being an activist is to disrupt so that you can bring change. I get it, but I think there are better ways of doing things. And um, hey, you could also argue, Rory, that there is never a change unless there's enough disruption. I can finish off the Spirit Soul Body podcast by saying, guess what, dear one? You and I are going to face a lot of disruptions in our lives. <laughs> some good, some bad, some downright ugly. Thanks for hanging out with me. I've been waxing lyrical on this uh, Tuesday podcast. I've enjoyed being with you. Please remember me in prayer. I am so busy right now, so I'm surprised I even had something to talk about, and hopefully it wasn't too boring, and hopefully you've found something to think about yourself. Love to hear from you. Let me know what you think. You're welcome to leave a comment below or send me a text or an email. And I will do my best to keep in touch as we move forward. Lots of exciting things coming up. By the way, find this book. This is as close as you're going to get. Pause the video right now so you can see what I'm holding here. It basically is called The Heart. It's 21 Days to Transform Your Life. Reinhard Hitler. I've got through half of this book. 
And then on the first of uh, the beginning of May, I'm going to do or the seventh of May, should I say, I'm going to join Mike Bickle and the guys praying for Jerusalem and Israel. I'm going to be fasting and praying. I was planning to do a seven day fast. If you've been tracking on my podcasts from episode one, I've lost already 13 kilograms today. As of today, not today, but as of today, the last four months, I've lost 13 kilograms. I'm happy for that. I've got more to lose another eight. And I'm working my way through this book. So Reinhard Hirtler, I don't know if you can see that on my camera there. Move your fingers. 21 days to transform your heart. And if there's even the slightest chance that you're watching this, Reinhard, I would love to have you on my podcast. Reach out to me. I've reached out to you on a private message. And um, as of the 7th of May, I will join the 21-day fast for Jerusalem and Israel. And I will incorporate this 21 days to transform your life. So I'll keep you guys and girls posted on how things go. With regard to Rory Alex Hart. Boom, 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 boom. And by the way, one more bomb into the fire, just as I touch on all of these hot potatoes on planet Earth. I think abortion is completely wrong. No matter what circumstance that life has brought into the womb. And I know that's tough, ladies, because you'll say, hey, you didn't have to bring that child up or you didn't go through that traumatic experience that caused life in the womb. But I will tell you something. You just study testimonials throughout the ages and there's been some extraordinary human beings who've touched your life and my life because they've come in a traumatic way into the womb. And thank God they were not aborted. And here's my personal belief. I believe you come into the to the embryo that's in your mother's womb that becomes you, your body, etc. When your heart starts to beat, again, I'm connecting all these dots here, it is around 18 days that the heart starts to beat, even before the brain is formed and most of the, the embryo body of the little one is formed. When that heart starts to beat, I believe that's when you and I, as a spirit being, come into the body. I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with me. It's been lovely to be with you. I look forward to being with you on Thursday, God willing. Everything's in his hands. One life, one body. Live it to the full. Take care of it. And yes, a new mantra from me will be, guard your heart. It's precious. And what comes out of it needs to be pure, needs to be right. Until next time, thanks for watching. From me, Rory Alec, a big, big God bless you.